For centuries, women have set tables offering fruits of love, nourishment, and comfort to others. Fast forward to the year 1995, and we see a new table being set in Memphis by philanthropist Murdy Williger Buckman, building on a dream to help women of all ages to reach their full potential. Murdy donated $50,000 as an initial gift to give birth to the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis. She also invited a group of women to join with her to act on a powerful idea. By pooling their resources, they could accomplish more in their community than each could individually. She had a vision and she had a mission and we were gonna turn that mission into a reality. Our goal was to form a supporting organization for the Community Foundation of Greater Memphis called the Women's Foundation of Greater Memphis. When Murdy Buckman turns to a relatively young at the time woman and asks, would you play a leadership role in this? The answer was without batting an eye, yes. I've always been interested in women and children and how can we do better and how can I reach out and help those people personally. At Murdy's table, these visionary leaders boldly summoned the strength, power, and voices of other women who shared a passion for service. They united their talents, resources, and souls to dawn a new morning for Memphis. The meaning of the Women's Foundation has to do with the reason I believe we're here. I really think we're here to heal a broken world and to try to bring the beloved community into real life in Memphis. Serving people, serving women, their children, their families, assisting them in whatever challenges they have. I distinctly remember Beth Dixon and Virginia Dunaway coming to visit me in my office with this exciting, amazing opportunity to, to join a group of women um, who are about to do something pretty remarkable for the city of Memphis. And I couldn't say no. These founding women of diverse backgrounds formed a bond of harmony and poured their hearts and finances into this exciting new movement. However, they knew that such an ambitious journey would require even greater support. To gain momentum, the founding women sent letters inviting friends and colleagues to join them in helping to transform the lives of women and children who needed their support. The vision ignited and the dollars began to arrive. A lot of the women on that first board really were women of means. It was a largely white board even though we were diverse and a lot of the women had a lot of money. And I was surprised to find that they were so concerned about others. I was surprised that they were so willing to roll up their sleeves and go to work and work hard. That women are the foundation of society. Uh, years and years and generations ago, it was always a matriarchal society because they are the ones who raise the children and uh, keep everybody together at home and knit the fabric of the family together. And if the children are well taken care of and given the right instructions or the uh, education, love and affection, that's how the society will come together and stay together. Using the power of images and storytelling, the founders held awareness events where other women could meet one another and hear from philanthropists like Texas heiress Helen Hunt, who helped establish the Dallas Women's Fund, and Osceola McCarty, the laundry woman who gave $150,000 to the University of Southern Mississippi. The sort of matriarchy of Miss McCarty combined with Murdy Buckman um, really provided all of this community um, that mother wit, that wisdom, um, the sense of sisterhood, the sense of empowerment, the sense that we can do this together. And it doesn't really matter what your means are. If you have the determination and the discipline, we can lift each other up. 
the potential that was there and then see the funds start coming in because I'd done fundraising for other things, but whether we could convince women to make significant gifts. I mean, probably one of the first most exciting things was when we had our first grant making session. It came out $10,000 short. And one of the women who was a philanthropist said, you know, those needs are so great. I'll give that $10,000 to fill it in. And that was an inspiration to other people, I think. The metaphoric picture of Murdy's table also became a reality when Mickey Babcock donated a pine table and later added 12 Queen Anne chairs. To enhance cultural diversity, Frederica Hodges donated African cloth for the upholstery, which celebrated differences while weaving a universal theme of unity. It's a wonderful spirited table with a lot of wonderful women that sat here and talked about it. And, and that's good. June 6, 1995, the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis was born right here. Mary Lou um, Awiata, uh, after one of our meetings, performed a Native American dance for, and all of us uh, participated. And that just shows part of the diversity of our, our, our group. To add artistic branding to the Women's Foundation's evolving story, Barbara Hyde commissioned artist Nancy Chairs to create two paintings. Mother Root shows Murdy alone in the forest embracing the vision. Sisters Ascending shows three women of different ethnicities being lifted up into the light.